The topic of today's interview, data sharing, looked so simple at the start of the REACH regulation. Barter something or negotiate a fair deal, but soon people smell the red or at least something fishy. What is fair, transparent and non-discriminatory? An interesting debate if we look retrospectively to the data sharing experiences so far, and especially in the light of the recent Commission implementing regulation on data sharing. I'm honored to be able to interview Crystal Masset, Director of Registration at the European Chemical Agency, on this challenging topic. Crystal, as you know, ChemCon Conferences is celebrating its 20th anniversary. ChemCon started in 1996, and this week I like to ask all interviewees what they were doing in 1996. In 1996, I graduated from the Wageningen University and received my Master of Environmental Sciences degree before moving to Asia. Crystal, what were you doing in 1996? Well, in 1996, Ted, unfortunately, I'm not that young as you are, so I had already worked quite a bit uh, in several countries, and I was coming back from Brazil, completed my Master in Business Administration, and I was working in a total different business environment. I was uh, working in the multimedia sector, doing DVD, and my clients were uh, Hollywood Studios, Columbia, Sony, so quite different story. Okay, interesting. A movie star almost. Exactly. Um, the recent implementing regulation has been adopted because data sharing and especially the sharing of cost was in many cases perceived not to be in line with the intention of REITs. Um, did ECHA encounter a lot of issues? Well, to be fair, it's uh, the companies that encountered a lot of issues. And I would say that there have been two main reasons for that. And the first one is the uh, OZAR principle, the one substance, one registration principle. And that was introduced, if you remember, to uh, avoid animal testing, but also to uh, reduce the cost of registration. And the second uh, complexity is the number of pre-registrants in the CIF. And then we have seen the introduction of administrative costs that have been extremely uh, unrealistic in certain cases. Uh, in terms of uh, the vertebrate animals, uh, that is an interesting thing that the implementing regulation clarifies. And what it says that if you uh, don't need uh, studies that are on vertebrate animals, uh, you can totally uh, sh submit your own data package and uh, you submit separately. You're still part of the joint registration, but you can submit separately, provided that you provide a, a justification for that. And what about the administrative costs? So the administrative costs, it covers all of the costs related to the management uh, of the CIF. And that's where we've seen a lot of complex uh, items, co lots of complex issues, because basically uh, that's where it's very difficult sometimes to exemplify the cost. The implementing regulation, what it does, it aims at clarifying uh, the, what is fair, what is transparent and non-discriminatory, makes clear that the cost must be, uh, very clar must be clarified with an itemization of the cost, uh, and it explains also that uh, there is a reimbursement mechanism that has to be in place. And finally, what it does, it's uh, clarify that ECA shall ensure that all registrants of the same substance are in the same joint registration. Uh, can the new rules also be enforced upon consortia? Well, definitely, because basically what the rich regulation says that uh, there is no consortia uh, per se. So basically there are CIF participants. Furthermore, uh, many consortia, lead resistant CIFs, they apply reductions or penalties for uh, read only use, risk premium, read across, etc. Is there any guidance for that? Uh, yes, there is. Actually, we have published last year a fact sheet on typical cost elements that uh, can be involved in data sharing negotiations. Uh, we are going also to review our guidance on data sharing and it will be published before the end of the year. Um, in case ECA judges the outcome of the dispute in favor of the company asking for data, what happens? Well, in that case, uh, as I said, we judged the efforts and we realized that there was some discrimination or no clarity. So in that case, if we take that decision, uh, we give the right to the company to refer to the data and we gave also the study summaries. And something which is important uh, as of this year, we will also distribute the token for entering the joint registration in case after a data sharing dispute, the lead registrant doesn't want to give the token. 
Final question. The new regulation states that the cost associated with the substance evaluation might also um, apply to registrants who already cease their activities. Actually, the implementing regulation once again uh, clarify that indeed uh, the, those having ceased them, their activities are still responsible for certain costs. Basically, what it means is that in the contractual agreement, the parties should, should foresee these future costs and see a way of how to recover for those costs. The CIF is a joint responsibility, yeah. and it's not only for the lead registrants. It's, it's not fair that the lead registrants bear all the, uh, the burden, not only the putting together the, the dossier, but then um, has to bear the burden of eva dossier evaluation decision, substance evaluation decision. So what, what we insist very much is a joint responsibility, including for the cost. Thank you for sharing the useful information with us on data sharing. I hope the new regulation will lead to better barters where all parties look as happy as on our cartoon. Thank you.